Hey book friends, it is time for a really cool video. This is the booktube spin. So this is an idea by Rick McDonald on his channel. And the idea is you come up with 20 possibilities of books to read. Um, ideally, he says those are gonna be in kind of four categories of five. Um, so you have, you know, uh, four categories, four categories of five, that's self-explanatory. Um, and I'll link his video, his original video down below. And then tomorrow on the 31st, I'm filming this on the 30th, because time, um, he will spin a big wheel with the numbers one through 20 on it. And then uh, whatever number comes up, that is the number on your list that you, that you read for the month of February. And I think actually, I wanna say this might've even been like a two month thing, unless I'm getting that mixed up with something else. But anyhow, I have done that. I think it's a super fun idea. So basically the most of this video will be me showing you my 20 books. And then at the very end of it, I will film tomorrow once the selection has been made and I'll, you'll see what book uh, I'm going to read in my reaction to that, I suppose. So it should be good because these are all books that I want to read. This, that's why I own them and I put them on this list. But uh, the four categories that I came up with are classics, SFF, BookTube made me do it. So this is something I've talked about before where I have, you know, if you're a BookTube watcher, you probably have a, a similar thing, a BookTube creator or a BookTube watcher, both. There's probably a lot of books that either you own that are on your physical TBR or in general on your TBR because of a particular BookTuber loves it or it's just kind of ubiquitous, ubiquitously loved. But that's what happens when you try to use big words. You stumble over them. Uh, everyone loves them. Um, and so you bought them because of that, or you put them on your TBR because of that reason. So I have a section for that. And then I have uh, the last five are the PBS top 100. So this is a list that came out, I think in 2018, I wanna say. Uh, so PBS, um, public broadcasting system, system, systems. Anyway, um, they came up with like the America's top 100 uh, most loved books, I believe was kind of the, the way they described it. The top 100 most loved books by Americans. And so I, when I very, very, my like first, maybe first ever or first couple of videos um, I did on BookTube, I had this idea of reading all of those books. So I think at the time that, that it was announced, I had read 35 of the 100 already. And then I went and I, I, I got a hold of most of them. And then I kind of realized there were some, like, I have no, I have no desire to actually read that. I kind of just gave up on that, but there's still a lot of books on that list that I would, uh, I would like to read. Um, and so I have five of those books to, to uh, round out the list. So I have them stacked, I think in order, it is written down so I don't mess up the stack. Some of these books, I don't, books or authors I really don't know much about. Um, sometimes it's because of the author that I want to read them or um, whatever. So the first one I picked up recently at my used bookstore, and it's a nice thin one. It is O Pioneers by Willa Cather. And I think this takes place kind of um, uh, Midwest. Yeah, uh, wind blasted prairie of Nebraska. Uh, I was actually born in Nebraska. Um, we moved back to California though when I was 17 days old. Um, so Willa Cather, I think she wrote this, I think 1913, I looked earlier. Um, I actually had no idea. I was like, is this a modern classic? Is this an, a classic classic, depending on where you draw the line? But I really didn't realize it was as old as it is. Um, and I think it's about like a woman goes out there and she's trying to make it on her own um, uh, farming. So uh, that is book one. I should stack these upside down. So they say in order. Number two, quite a bit different, is Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge. I haven't read any Hardy yet. Uh, I plan to. He's been on my Victober TBR, you know, probably three out of three years that I've participated in uh, in Victober. And so really, I didn't, I didn't read much beyond uh, like the whole blurb of this. But all I need to know is in a fit of drunken anger, Michael Hinchard sells his wife and baby daughter for five guineas at a country fair. Let's go. Then the book probably that I have owned in some edition, not this edition, but I've owned some edition of this book for the longest without having read it is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And this is a uh, vintage Red Spine classic. The When I was in high school, sorry if you can hear the dogs barking, it's the neighbor's dogs. Um, the honors, I think junior English, sophomore or junior English, class has read this. I wasn't in honors English until my senior year. 
Um, and so I knew of it. I knew I, I, I felt like I got I, I like missed out on reading it. Um, but so I bought it with the thought of reading it and then never actually did. So and then I went and bought a better a better copy of it and I still haven't read it. Um, and we have Sylvia Plath um, the bell jar. I really don't know anything about this. Um, what this this one actually kind of could go in either the book, booktube made me do it. it. You know what? It wasn't even a booktube. A booktuber, her book, um, Lucy Powery wrote the, the something in Paper Heart Society. I think I'm missing a word there, but it was a really fun YA novel about friendship. And there were many, many references to the bell jar. The main character is, uh, it's like her favorite book. And so it's, it's brought up a lot. One of my, actually one of my thoughts for a category would be um, uh, down the rabbit hole. Uh, an Alice is down the rabbit hole category where I bought a book specifically because it was brought up in another book and it made me want to read it. So that will, that fits into that category, but you know, this is a, a classic or a, a modern classic. Um, and then to round out classics, we have just probably at least one of these books that I'm intimidated in each of these groups, uh, intimidated by, and that is this one. That is This is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This is in the, the really cool vintage classics editions. Uh, they have these for like different categories of classics. So the Russian classics um, all have different but similar styled uh, classics. This is also, I think, the shortest of them. Um, so this is under 400 pages. Um, and I guess the only reason it intimidates me is that it's, uh, it's a classic, but, and it's, also, it's a Russian classic. And I have no idea um, like how difficult or easy of a read it will be. Um, but I do know that I have heard a few people speak really highly of this. Can't think of specifically who that would be, but I've heard it. All right, then we move into SSF, SFF, sci-fi and fantasy. So we have Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is uh, book two in the, what's the name of the actual series? I don't remember what the series is actually called, but, oh, Book of the Ancestor. Book two of the Book of the Ancestor series, um, basically assassin, an assassin nunnery um and yeah i really liked red sister the first book in this um and i want to continue on and i've heard really great things about about this book in the last book and just never continued on with it i did not wait, read a lot of um sci-fi and fantasy last year actually <clears throat> um this would probably be the one that intimidates me in this group this is the final empire by brandon sanderson this is the first of the mistborn novels uh, despite the word final being in the title, which can be confusing uh, when you're buying these books. And this is also the UK covers, which are just amazing and look awesome on your shelf. I have several of them and they do look awesome on my shelf, but I haven't read them. So I need to rectify that. Um, so uh, this is on, on here. I'm not, I'm not mentioning the numbers here. What number are we on? This is number seven. So number eight is book two in the uh, Broken Earth trilogy, The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. I read, I'm blanking on the first one right now all of a sudden, but I read that a few months ago and I uh, quite enjoyed it. Um, and all three books, I think this is the first time this has happened, all three books in this trilogy won the Hugo Award. Um, and then sci-fi, this is the only, the only sci-fi um, I guess I guess the ancestor or the broken earth is kind of sci-fi. Anyway, uh, Relentless Moon by um, what's your first name? Mary Robinette Cole. So one of my first books, like one of my first like book two made me do it books was um, the Lady Astronaut by um, Mary Robinette Cole. It's the first in in this series, and that was highly recommended by or I got the recommendation from. Rachel Colinati. I was blanking on her name all of a sudden. Rachel Colinati was actually the first booktuber I ever saw. It was I didn't know that booktube existed. Um, I had finished this book called Arcadia by Ian Pierce, and I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard anybody talk about it, and I just wanted to like hear somebody else's perspective. So I just Googled it, and I came across a video that she did talking about it, um, and I discovered booktube. So that was you know probably a few months away from four years ago, and you know never looked back. Um, so this is the third book in that series, and it's it's basically like 
um, alternative history, sci-fi. So like historical, his like, like um, historical fiction, but alternative historical and sci-fi. Um, really cool and about um, like initially the space race um, to the moon had to be completely not only um, like sped up because um, like a climate changing uh, meteorite kind of situation had happened. Um, not climate changing, but like um, humans survival was really at risk here. And so not only was the space race sped up, but it also became much more, um, what's the word where you work together? <laughs> the countries were working together. Collaborative is the word I'm looking for rather than um, adversarial. Um, and it's super, super cool. And there's a lady astronaut at the, at the center of it and her husband. Um, they also have a really nice relationship. That's one thing I really like about um, about these books and the first one in particular is that the relationship between her and her husband um, is really, really nice, which you don't always actually get to see um, in fiction. So excited about this one. And then the last one here, so we're book on, we're on number 10. Uh, this is A Conjuring of Light, um, the last in the whatever uh, this series is called by V.E. Schwab. Um, a Darker Shade of Magic is the first book. So this guy is a honker. Um, I think maybe in my last vlog, I had started listening to this on audiobook and it just wasn't, I was not paying attention to it. So I've really enjoyed the first two books. I, I read the first two books uh, to my late husband, Sam. Um, and so I would like to finish off the series and audiobook was not gonna work. Um, sometimes, sometimes that happens and it's not, it's not anything against the book. It just doesn't, just doesn't work for you. All right, number 11, book one in the booktube made me do it pile is The Title Zone by Sarah Moss. This is a big favorite of Jen Campbell's, uh, I believe Mercedes of Mercy's, Mercy's Bookish Musings um, really likes this book uh, as well and just Sarah Moss as an author. Um, and the only thing by Sarah Moss I've read is um, Ghost Wall, which I, I, I really enjoyed, but I think this is a, a much more realistic uh, kind of story. So basically, um, I think this is the one where this, this teenage girl here is at school and she like collapses or something. She has some sort of a, like cardiac event that happens. Um, and uh, I, I think her dad might be, um, her dad might be single. Um, and uh, it's like dealing with whatever happened. So um, I'm not sure if she's the main character or if her dad is the main character or if it's like a split narrative, I'm not sure, but there we go. And then we have uh, Kate Atkinson, Case Stories, or Case Histories, rather. Um, Simon Savage loves Kate Atkinson and particularly Case Histories. And I think this is the first in like a crime series actually by the, the detective. Um, I'm not exactly positive about that, but I think so. I have read Life After Life by Kate Atkinson, which I really, really enjoyed. And I have a, I have a few, like a handful of her books. Um, so this would be the second one to get to. Then we have Stoner by John Williams. This is another uh, vintage red spine. And this is Well, Well Loved by Russell of Ink and Paper Blog. I also recently heard someone else mention it just like within the last week or two and I can't remember who it was. And um, I don't really know much about it. It's kind of an academic book, kind of suggestive there by the books on the title or books on the cover. So that was number 13. Number 14, we have Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Actually, I just saw Kim from Middle of the Bookmarks. This is on hers. Oh, I didn't pay attention to what number. When I was watching hers, I was like, oh, I should make mine be the same number. And that way, if that number comes up, we would get to read it together. But um, I didn't do that. Um, and uh, this is one of the favorite books, uh, one of Mercedes of Mercy's Bookish Musings, one of her favorite books. Um, and I really don't know uh, anything about it. My dog wants to go and hang on. Okay, have I been talking really fast? I feel like I'm talking really fast. I keep thinking that and then like, oh, slow down. And then I catch myself going a mile a minute again. I did this live, uh, I did it for the first time, I did a live workout, like a full on live workout uh, on my, uh, in my Facebook group this morning. And every Monday I do a mobility workout, which is, it's, it's like, 
they're like 10 to 15 minutes. It's, it's brief. And so this was a full on hour. We, we had, we had, like, had a warm up, which we started with mobility. Then we did the, you know, the, the full on, uh, workout. And then we ended with some, some mobility to cool down, um, and stretch out. And I think I'm on like a high from that still. Um, so I'm all like, mm, I've only had one cup of coffee. I swear. All right. Number 15, the last in, uh, in this category, book two made me do it, is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. Uh, I could have gone with the rules of civility for this as well. And this is a, um, a big favorite of Olive from a book Olive. But so we're talking about Moscow and despite this amazing weather, my sleeves are up, I could easily take off my thermal shirt. I'm, I'm hot right now. Uh, we have beautiful weather here in California, but um, it has been cold and dreary up until like this morning um, for several days. So uh, we had a heck of a storm actually. Like people were out of, you know, without power for like two days. The winds were like, you know, 60 mile an hour gusts and everything. I hardly slept on, um, what night was it? I don't know, like Tuesday night maybe. Um, uh, I was up from like 3.15 on Monday night. I don't know, whatever. I'm rambling. So that's number 15. All I really know about that one, by the way, what is this book? Um, what I know about this book is uh, this guy, I guess, for some reason, he gets kind of like, in prison might be like too strong of a word, but basically he has to stay uh, like in this hotel in Moscow for some extended period of time due to something uh, maybe political or I'm not sure if it's more of like a protective situation. Um, it doesn't seem like he's like a bad guy, um, like he's being punished. Um, but yeah, I've heard really good things from other than all of from like anybody who's read that as well. And then our last, uh, the last stack here are books um, on the PBS top 100. So the first one is a chunker. This is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. It's a Western. I've never read a Western. Um, you know, I have grandparents from um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Idaho. Um, my, actually my, my dad's dad, my grandpa, um, kind of resembles, he's actually like a better looking uh, Charles Bronson. So my, um, my great grandma that just passed away, which is my mom's grandma, uh, she always like, um, as a nickname, called my grandpa, whose name is Hector, called him Charlie because um, she, thought, she thought he looked so much like Charles Bronson, but who is a Western actor, if you didn't know. But anyhow, um, yeah, I've heard really good things about, about this from anyone who's read it as well, despite its long length, almost 900 pages. So I just, I just read a 900 page book, why not another one? So that's number 16, so number 17 is John Irving's A Prayer for Owen Meany. Um, and really don't know anything about this mid-century um, I'm guessing kind of country by, based on the, by, based on the cover. Um, my friend Megan loves John Irving. I can't remember the name of the book. She got me one of his books uh, a long time ago for, um, for a Christmas present. And I really enjoyed that. It's even, I enjoyed it, but I don't remember what it, what it was. And then number 18, we have A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Another one, kind of a modern classic that I really don't know anything about. I say modern classic. When was this actually written? 1896. Okay, definitely, no, 1943. Betty Smith was born in 1896. 1943. So another, another mid-century American. This is like super floppy and like way, it's way heavier than it looks like it should be. Number 19, Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. I think a kind of companion book to this just came out where it's like about one of uh, the characters in, in this series. So I've, I'm remembering this rightly or understand this correctly. There's like three books that's kind of like the Gilead books. And then there are a few others that are kind of companion books to that maybe. And number 20, also a classic, is Pil Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Progress. Showing it like this, like, ooh, look. Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. This is a Christian classic and it's, it's kind of an allegory for um, salvation and the Christian life as the main character Christian uh, wanders about the world essentially looking for salvation um, and um, I read I, I had thought 
I thought I had read this uh, several years ago, and it turns out it was only like it was like a um, abridged kids version of it. So I haven't really read it, um, but I've you know it's referenced all the time. Um, and I got this copy. You know what? I think I actually got this copy at McKay's when I was with Doris, and I just liked this old edition of it. Let's see if I can find how old the edition is. It's so warm. I might get like a, a sunburn on the back of my neck here. I am. I am sweating. Are we, are we gonna get a year here? There's no publishing information in here. It goes from the title page to the first page. Okay, old, I don't know. So that is book 20, Pilgrim's Progress. So tomorrow I will be back after the number has been chosen by Rick and will reveal the book that I'm reading. Good morning, it's Sunday morning. It's the booktube spin day. Uh, so, like, the first thing I did when I got up this morning, uh, went to uh, Rick McDonnell's channel and found out what book I will be reading. So, um, is it a spoiler to say what number it was? I'm not going to say what number it was, just in case you see my video before you see his video. So, just in case you want to do it, preserve the, uh, the sanctity of the spin. The book that came up for me came in the category of booktube made me do it and that is a gentleman in moscow by amor tolls so this is inspired by olive of a book olive which i mentioned um and i know many people um have enjoyed this actually i just saw the comment from uh, i commented on kim from middle of the book march uh, on the book that she got what book i got are you following and, and she said it was a five-star read for her so she was excited for that and thinks i will really enjoy it so there we have it. So I think what I might do is I like the stack that I have. Um, the categories, like those are categories of books that uh, I acquired for specific reasons. Um, and um, so I think what I'll do is I will just continue to replace as we as we do the booktube prize or the booktube spin rather. I will just continue to replace. So replace this with another booktube made me do it book. Booktube made me buy it book. And then... Um, also, if I feel like reading one of those books that are in that stack, I would just replace that with a book from the similar category um, because I don't want to, I don't want to prevent myself from reading those, uh, those other 19 books right now, um, waiting for the booktube spin to come about. So anyway, um, I am happy about this. I had started this on audiobook a, a while back and just sometimes, like I mentioned with, um, a conjuring of light sometimes it just doesn't click for you um with an audiobook and the same thing actually happened to me i think last month with uh, the vanishing half which i know is like just pretty much unanimously adored by everyone so i do plan on reading the vanishing half in physical form in february um but anyway so i'm, I'm like a little bit trepidatious about this just because i'd had that kind of like not great start with it on audiobook but I think that I just need to chalk that up to sometimes the audiobook isn't right for you and that I'm actually going to uh, absolutely going to adore it um, once I get into it. So um, the physical form. So anyway, there you have it. The booktube spin. What book, if you're participating, um, what book did you end up reading? Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.